Oh man, look at that thing behind me. That is a sharp contrasting look coming out of the J-Flight family. This is the 8180 pound J-Flight 32 BHDS. It's uh, like everybody and their brother builds something like this. It's that big double slide bunkhouse. You've got a dedicated private slide bunk room in the back. Bathroom entry, door, huge camp kitchen, partridge in a pear tree. So everybody builds it. Why would you look at this one? Why would you consider Halet RV? And I, and I think the answer to the second question is when we answer all of the first questions. It's not one big reason why. How about the fact that almost no found nowhere else in a stick and tin class, we have a standard 60 by 80 true queen. They have an option for a king. We have a taller ceiling. They have, uh, I personally feel, the heaviest, best uh, thermal package available in a stick and tin class. I actually personally suspect it is zero degree capable, but Jayco's never done the testing, so I can't promise that for you today. Uh, they've recently got rid of all the carpet. That is a big time game changer feature. Um, the uh, you know bigger air conditioner options, you could add a second air conditioner option on something like this. The rear bunk room has those, I call them converted cube jobs. They allow the RV to do anything. You wanna turn this into an office, a second bedroom, a pet kennel galore? You can do all of that, or you could just sleep a bunch of people in it. What's really cool about it is in a sense it's a triple bunk that sleeps four very easily, including bigger, not just little kids, but like it, it could have a big adult size sleeper. You'll see when we get back there. It's a hundred little things like they have the best in class warranty, Goodyear tires, turn signal safety lighting, rear and side camera prep. Everything on this is like a plus one for what you normally find in this class. It's going to be a little bit more expensive than some of the other things that we have here in a similar class. It's going to have a little more to show for it. And that's the kind of stuff that we're gonna point out here. Now it's got a couple downfalls. It's very, very lacking on door side window coverage. Like I will go through, I will tell you the good, the bad, the ugly with everything in between. I'm gonna show you the highs and lows. And if you appreciate that more fair way that we look at things, if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. And as we go through this video, share some notes with me. Let me know what you like. And let me know what you change given the opportunity. And I mean, right off the bat, right when you step into a J-Flight, everything just feels a little bit bigger, a little bit more solid. And our, people who are not experienced RVers, people who've never walked into an RV before this year, who have just started touching different dealerships and shopping different things, they will so often walk specifically into a J-Flight and say things like, it's just... I don't know, it just feels more solid, you know? They can't even describe it, but they know there's something here and they're not wrong. So first of all, uh, a six foot nine ceiling like this has become uh, far more common, but it's because J-Flight has made it more common. They've been taller for years compared to most people. That skylight up there, uh, it does have a uh, shade, by the way, so you don't cook under the, uh, like, under magnifying glass. It also helps open everything up. And you might notice on the left side of the screen, we are looking at the modern farmhouse decor today. But if the uh, the white kitchen cabinetry stuff is not your thing, they also have a brown on brown option called cottage instead of farmhouse. But major new for 22 point right here. We have They have gotten rid of all of the carpet in all of their slides, in all of their models, even in a more basic J-Flight SLX that is just so, so cool. I, you know, you're only seeing other people doing it here and there, maybe certain laminated trailers. They're the first I, I've really seen in a major stick and tin brand to accomplish that. Now, one of the differences between SLX and uh, SLX, the little brother to this and the full J-Flight, is that they do still use floor ducted heating on this. They have a straight heat run down the middle. It is a more effective heating system um, it, it, and if you don't like those little vents, there's little covers, there's little filters. You could put a little runner rug over it, but that'll be one of the differences. SLX is not made really for an extended season camp expectation, whereas these are. And that's it, So they, they equip it with a heat system that makes sense accordingly. But when people say more solid, what do they mean? You're looking at pocket screwed cabinetry instead of stapled fasteners. Catalina is very good about that as well. You'll be looking at things like uh, generally like, uh, you know, larger refrigerators, although a lot of manufacturers have gone to those 12 volt fridges, which I think is cool. Um, a couple things. Uh, standard, this is a 30 amp RV. Standard, it has a 13,500 BTU air conditioner. At the very least, at Halet RV, 10 times out of 10, we are going to slap the larger 15,000 BTU air on that. Know that you can also upgrade this into 50 amp service. And if you are so inclined, add a second air conditioner. On this floor plan, I believe it actually direct dumps into the uh, the bedroom. But for now, we're going to take a look at that brown door on the left and go to... Oh, brown door when I'm talking about the bathroom. That was that was not intentional. I know I say stuff like that. that I didn't mean that. Uh. 
I suppose as long as we're talking about the brown door, we'll take a look at the brown door handle that actually has a lock. Also, notice porcelain foot flush stool and just extremely fluffy friendly. Not just leg room, but hips, shoulders, nice wide space on that. And this has a direct entry bathroom door, which cuts down so much dirty foot traffic in the RV. But something I want to show you here, if I sit on the stool myself, that is all the harder it is to deadbolt that and have full privacy. So if somebody tries to get in from the outside, it might make you a little nervous. There might be a little, you know, a little moment like that. But the good news is no one's going to see you in here in all your glory. And, you know, a lot of times I'll sit on the sofa and give you a view of things. How about we sit here uh, on the toilet and just kind of give you a look around. They have stuck with a tub in this one. It's worked for years, and this is a popular model. I don't think they felt they needed to change that. But with that taller ceiling, it means that if you're bigger like me, you don't have to have your head up in that bubble causing double-double toiling trouble. And going past, um, <clears throat> do we say door number two or the number two door? Like, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> going past that, we get back here into this private bunk room. And this is this is done deceptively well. Like, there's a lot of really good things here that are very easy to miss. First of all, something I, even here on, on your stick and tin Jayco's, you've got double thick bunk mattresses. You've got plywood use. Like, they don't use OSB, chipboard, particle board, beaver puke, whatever you want to call it. They, they just don't use that stuff in J-Flights. It's a more premium material trailer. Now, if I take a little seat on this little lounge back here behind us in the slide, if you feel like adding a TV, uh, on the left-hand side in there, you might notice some TV hookups just peeking around the way. But you can always use this, just like dresser storage or anything like that. And then over here, you see a tiny little shoe garage down there, which is I love that. I am such a fan of shoe garages because they turn air into something useful. And I think most people will agree, folding, uh, folded clothing space in the bunk room is more useful typically than hanging space. But if you hang with me in a second, I'm going to show you where this one actually does have some pretty sweet hanging space. And I want to thank one of my viewers, Miss, I think it was Tracy, uh, advised that right there is a barefoot friendly ladder. And I'm glad she pointed that out. It's something I never would have thought about because I'm always wearing shoes when I'm up and down these. Instead of those little dowel rods, those things really do eat into your feet if you take your shoes off. That those big flat planks, that weighs more. It is stronger. It holds more weight. Adults can climb up and down that thing or bigger kids if need be. Um, and uh, again, it's just friendlier on the feet. Jayco builds that in-house. That's not a part that they just, you know, uh, purchase elsewhere from somebody else. And then we come over here. And I'm a big fan of these little converter cube jobs. That's uh, nerdism number 37, by the way. Because the only thing they're good for is everything. And notice that bunk window right there. Like the opposite side, it's small, but it does open for airflow. They all open for airflow back here. The blue dangler over there advises us that we have at least a 300 pound uh, capacity for all of these bunks. See those outlets on the opposite wall? There's a reason that there's like a high and a low outlet. Because, you know, if you have it down in sleeper position, maybe you want a little phone or an alarm clock or something next to you. And this right here, these things, I don't know why they're not more popular. They're the most flexible thing you've ever seen in a bunkhouse because you can flip the two of them open from like sofa lounge mode in a big double sleeper like this but keep in mind what that also means it means there's absolutely nothing gumming up the slide over here so if you are looking for just a very nice rig where one or two of you could convert it into some kind of office or craft room or something like that in a completely non-invasive fashion. You could move right into this thing and turn it into an office. Actually, I've got a whole video dedicated to this concept. I might drop a link in the video description if you're curious, just to get some inspiration. Notice too, still carpetless back here. Uh, as my dad would say, keep your dirty booger pickers off my nice carpet. Uh, he always had these, these sweet little things to say. Actually, my, I am so lucky. My dad is just absolutely the best. But there's one more thing back here. Because it has the converter cube system, this also has the JBF. What is the JBF, you ask? Well, that, my friends, is the Jayco Battlefort. JBF, go! Ultimate play space, ultimate fun. Jayco Battlefort, get some! And all joking aside, what is actually really cool... I yelled so... I seriously... I got lightheaded yelling so loud. I've, I've, whew, I'm really blowing a lot of hot air in this thing. Holy cow. <laughs> I'm getting the vapors over here. But um, <laughs> all joking aside, 
this can all just get out the way. And this thing has what I like to call the move bunk get out the way. It locks up in place. I had to have a lot of faith in that thing. It, it, otherwise, it would have straight clocked me on the noggin and I'd have been laying here with the camera rolling. You'd have had about, I don't know, half hour of dead footage as I suffered from a concussion. You can get all this out of here though. You could also use this like a pack and play. So like if you have a, a family where you have multiple kids spanning a lot of ages, you could have, you know, like the littles down here where you don't got to roll, worry about a roll down the bed. As they grow up, they can advance here. The bigs can take the fixed bunk where basically that's your point of view right there. We've, we've got sleeping in the living room we haven't even talked about yet. And I guess as long as we're going to talk about sleeping, if we actually slide back here into the living room, the entire super slide kind of gets in on the act. And you've got a couple different options here. First of all, this model always has that uh, big u dinette, which folds down into like a big seven foot adult size sleeper. And you notice too, uh, if it's uh, gonna be a bright day out, even if you're not just using it for sleeping privacy, you can do a heck of a job of blotting the sun out there. And this is the standard jackknife bifold sofa. We've, uh, there is a hide -a bed available here. And it's one of those things that over the years, more and more people have actually opted for this sofa for the extra storage that you get below it being really handy for the family which is something this layout does really well. One of the things, as you start trying to squish bunkhouses down, you, try, you keep trying to sleep just as many, if not more people in a smaller space, you have to start giving up something. And very often you end up sacrificing storage capacity. And that's really not the case here. Also note, once again, easy view of that completely carpetless side and that nicer elliptical table base. So if you can kind of shift that around as need be. Now, this doesn't have to be a pantry, which is nice. We're about to see a full dedicated pantry, which is why I kind of want to get you uh, around the corner over here so you can see that actually does have a handy little hanging bar right there. That can be a good closet space for the bunk room because uh, bunk houses really tend to suffer from storage for the people in the actual bunk room back there. And you can see you don't got to deal with that here. Now, remember, with a taller ceiling, we have a taller pantry. Uh, and right next to that, we have the larger 12 volt, uh, compressor fridge option applied to this one. I think that looks so good when paired up with the farmhouse because the compressor fridge will always have a stainless front. Um, I, I just, I don't know the, the, uh, the, the stainless on the brown tone. Uh, cause again, there's a different decor that you have available on this. It just doesn't do it for me as well as this does. Now notice that TV Entertainment Center can spin around, and I love how Jayco finishes off the back side of that with a full, uh, you know, mirror. It just, even if you're not watching TV, it makes the whole room look and feel a little bit more bigger. It makes it feel alive. It's one more way to keep an eye on your kids and make them think you're omnipotent for a little bit. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, sealed edge kitchen counter, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Some easy reach outlets right over there uh, next to the, uh, uh, you know, door as well, between the door and the window. Good space for a wastebasket down here. You can see a giant clutter cut and shoe garage right by the door over there with a little lower pantry tainment center uh, as well. But, oops, I'm, I'm, oops, that's, see, that's the risk I run leaving all these doors open and, and moonwalking backwards through these things. I got a door stuck open behind me, screwing myself up left and right and center here, people. Something to talk about, but I don't usually show you are the alternate ways you can use that floating table though. Because nothing says it's gotta stay there. You know, I mentioned a pack and play. If you got a little baby, it is not hard to come up with some kind of little blocker uh, area to kind of corral them in there. And you know, in a sense, have a little living room pack and play and you can shift the table over. You could make this like a little, uh, you know, game day station. It's just, there's just different options. You could take it outside. You could use it for picnic time, you know? There's, there's a bunch of different ways you could utilize this. Now, I, real quick, before we move along too far, I want to point out that, like, you see how, like, all the windows open. This thing gets maximum, maximum airflow. The only window in this that doesn't open is the main entry door, which is a full viewing window. It's privacy shade ready. But did you catch that in the bathroom? They were actually using a frosted glass window in there so that you get the light and maintain the privacy, which I think is cool. The bedroom in here is another area where they've done and instead of or. In a stick and tin class, there's almost nobody using a 60 by 80 true queen like this. And I want to mention that because a lot of times when you get into a floor plane like this with an island entertainment center, the bed goes right up to the wall and you can't make the mattress bigger. This has a bigger mattress 
and space that you can butt scoot boogie around that thing. Cross breeze windows, you see that switch right there for our overhead lights because it is a tall trailer. But what's also kind of cool about this is not only does it already have like the biggest size bed that you're really going to find in this class, you notice how the side stands don't come quite up to the mattress. They standardize this so that if you want to option in a factory 70 by 80 king, you can. Now, there's also uh, some handy storage right down uh, below that bed right there. And if we take a peek at the other side of the bedroom, you see that we also have a roof solar prep point here. So there's right above that, actually right above, it's on the door side is the roof solar prep plug. And then that would be obviously our, our charge controller uh, location. Um, you know, under the bed, you have those open kind of partitions. You could use them for totes. You could use them for dog beds. It's just very versatile, very functional. And I tell you, this is, I talk all the time about the blue backbreaker wafer of death. I can't demonstrate this on video. I'm telling you, that mattress doesn't suck. I would still put a foam top around it, but that mattress doesn't suck. Now, one of the more surprising features on this one to me is the basically full travel accessibility that this one has. Surprisingly so. Most of the time, when you get the big U dinette closing in on the hallway like this, it pretty much pinches everything off. So, I mean, obviously the kitchen we can get to. The question usually becomes what happens back here. Most of the time with a floor plane like this, what I end up saying is, well, you know, remember that you have an outside door straight to the bathroom if you need it. But if you do a little sideways travel trailer two-step like this, even with my big Buddha belly, we can still get back here. Uh, you know, even moderately sized adults, maybe we'll just say it that way, can still get back here into this bunk room. So this is, I think, one of the most travel accessible versions of this floor plan built by any manufacturer today. Now, a couple things. You might notice this looks a little bit different from some of the other J flights you've seen on our channel recently. That's because so far before this video published, we have seen only a handful of J flight SLX little brothers come in. This is the full flight. This is, uh, you, you know, the whole ball of wax. Like we have the bigger 30 pound propane tank standard instead of optional. We have like a larger diamond plate. Everything on this is plus one more than you find on an SLX. But what I love is how you don't have lesser construction on an SLX. It's not, well, that's the cheap, it's cheaper. They scale that one up. No, it's just this one adds widgets and whiz bangs. So think of them both like a fudge sundae, but this one you add peanuts and sprinkles. That's what we're looking at right here. And man, that is just a striking color palette with that just sweet dark blue sky going on behind it. You never know, standing here right now this morning, it was 49 degrees and so foggy, we actually had a, a local school delay uh, because of it. Now up front here, I accidentally the other day came up with a new uh, nerdism, the, uh, the, the barrack, the, 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 the battery rack. <laughs> now from the factory, they don't include a battery, but we do include your first one at no additional charge from Halo RV. That's something that we like to make sure every RV is functional and ready to go. Uh, magnet holdbacks for these baggage doors and a big full pass-through with a big baggage door on both sides. You might notice it doesn't dog leg left quite as far as they used to. That's because again, they bulked up that underbed uh, support space right there. Uh, as we back up, something I wanna point out, and you may again have noticed it on the slide sides, is every window, with the exception of the window in the door on this, they all open for airflow, and they are all heavily tinted. That is something you only seem to get about 50% of the time in this class of RV. And the thing is, this is like a 35, 36 foot rig. I actually, I, I personally feel this is bigger than where I'm really comfortable saying half ton towable. There are theoretically some very capable, very heavy duty half tons that could handle this safely. Um, I, I feel because of the length and the weight of this one, it feels more three quarter ton uh, and, and up to me. Uh, outside TV hookup, you see that key block on the upper right there, that black rectangle looking at us. Down below here, you've got something kind of cool. You see this little thing right here, it says J port. One of the options you can get on this RV is uh, you can get a Blackstone griddle with it and it comes with this big extension mount so that hot burning griddle doesn't you know, melt the paint off the side of your awesome J flight over here. Now the, the Blackstone thing is optional, so kind of keep that in mind. But if you see, if you're walking around a dealer's lot and you see it has that extension bar in that tray, then it has been optioned with that feature. That is optional on J flights. It's, it's standard on some of the bigger laminated Jayco's that have camp kitchens, just to keep in mind. What is also standard 
are the Goodyear Endurance radials that we're looking at here. We've got some best in class tire action going on. Um, and there are more and more manufacturers kind of jumping on that bandwagon right now, doing what Jayco's been doing standard, frankly, for a long time. Now, what's kind of cool about this is the number one and uh, <coughs> number two reasons we go in and out of the RV, they're right out here. You don't have to track dirt through this new carpetless camper because we got that dead bolting direct entry door right here to the bathroom. And uh, to someone who's never camped before, I get it. This feels weird. You feel like you're uh, out here on display, right? Like I said though, this is a dead bolting door and you can reach that right from the stool if need be. You can make sure no one's walking in on you. And if they do, Frankly, it's their loss. Like sometimes people get embarrassed by that, but frankly, they're the ones that are gonna have to go to bed at night remembering what they saw. <laughs> now this big camp kitchen door, take a look at this. There's plenty of headroom under that thing, even for me. You saw me at 6'3", standing in the shower. I can stand under that. There's no knocking, knocking going on in here unless you feel like doing a little jumping jack flash action. Now in this big camp kitchen, the bottom right drawer didn't used to be there last year because this didn't used to have the Blackstone. It had a little pull-out cooktop like burner thing that frankly, the, uh, if you could blow out the candles on a happy birthday cake, you could blow that thing out. Um, so you might kind of wonder, wait a minute, if the camp kitchen's back here, why is the Blackstone mount all the way up there? And there's actually an intentional reason for it. I, I called Jayco and asked him the same question. And the reasoning basically is because not every single person's gonna want that Blackstone. The thing with that little J port over there, I'm, I'm doing reverse camera view footage. There we go, the J port over there. Man, this is hard. The weatherman, whew, they are more talented than I ever realized, or the, the weather person, apologies. Um, the, uh, the, the weather hot pocket, I don't care, whatever you wanna say. Um, there's, there's, it's a two inch receiver hitch off the side of this and it's incredibly robust. There's a world of accessories you could hook up to this. I joke about the bumper dumper all the time, but there's hammocks, there's little tables, there's a uh, little outdoor trash can holder things. There's a whole ton of stuff that you could hook off the side of this thing. Little mini cargo pods. I mean, whatever you're looking for, it doesn't have to be just a Blackstone mount, which is why it's not called the Blackstone port. It's the J port, baby. It's good for, I don't know. I was trying to come up with something cool to say here. <laughs> sure didn't. So that's the why behind the what. Now, uh, a couple other quick notes in this camp kitchen. You got the bigger fridge. It is 110 only. So if you're boondocking, you're either going to have to wire up an inverter, get a small inverter generator, which if I was boondocking, I would always have at least a small inverter generator with me personally. Um, or you're just going to have to use it like an icebox. And that is a real sink, by the way, with a real drain into a holding tank. It's not the, uh, the dog dish that you have to flip out onto the ground. Now, this has the J-Smart lighting package, uh, where if you flip on your turn signals, all of the side marker lights and extra upper clearance lights will blink with the, uh, your turn signal package so that other people on the road know what you're doing. There's an option if you want to get a factory installed rear receiver hitch put on these. We used to do that all the time, and we weirdly just people stopped asking for it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe now that you know it's available, is that something you would want on here? Understanding it's going to add a little bit of money, it's going to add a small amount of weight. But is that something that would interest you? You still maintain the bumper, you don't lose that. Remember, we are uh, rear and side camera ready. And uh, a couple things I want to show you here. This one has a really cool option for, I grew up, um, it might surprise you since I'm such a dork and nerd, but I actually grew up in the saddle. I grew up riding horses uh, and uh, we would do some, some barrel racing speed events. And when I see a little hideaway pocket like this right here, I think, man, if you got one of those twist uh, tension curtain rods, you put that thing out here with that hot, cold outside shower, that right there is the perfect little cowboy shower space all above our primary sewer outlet area. Now I say primary, because if I slide you backwards and we do a Michael Jackson <laughs> moonwalk, you see that there is actually just a, uh, a gray outlet uh, back here. There's just basically too much belly space on this to try to, to cross dump them uh, all together. So something I want to spend a little time talking about, but unfortunately I can only talk about it, I can't really show it to you, is the J-Flight Thermal Package. Uh, there's a lot of good RVs in this class and there's a lot of them that have names like thermal package extended package something like that I have not seen one 
that is as involved as you get here on a J flight. There's a lot of them that maybe have an enclosed belly. Some of them aren't even heated, some of them are. J flight thermal package starts with an enclosed and heated belly, but it goes beyond that. They add radiant barrier laying in, uh, into the RV, like through the slide floor. Every single Jayco, by the way, has a radiant barrier in the slide floor to help the efficiency of the heating and cooling package, but they add extra insulation to the roof and the belly. Like I said, I actually personally suspect, I can't promise this though, that a J flight is pretty much the only stick and tin trailer out there that could qualify as four seasons, which there's no real definition for, but my definition for it is, can it pass zero to hundred degree testing for an indefinite period? Like if it's zero degrees for 24 hours, can it keep the pipes from freezing? I think this one can, but Jayco's never tested it. I can't promise that. What I can tell you is this is probably the best extended season camper you can get in a stick and tin class. By the way, if you really like this camper, but you're like, gah, I just wish it didn't have that wavy tin skin. They do offer a fiberglass skin option. I call it a fiber flight. There's no special name for it. It's not like a Cherokee black label package. It's just fiberglass skin, but that is available. It's gonna add a little weight. It's gonna add a little cost. But folks, it looks dynamite. Now, a couple little details for you up top here on top of the world, as Jack said to Rose, or something like that. What did he say? I don't know if I've ever seen Titanic all the way through. I'm also not going to lie. I was a younger man, uh, hormonally infused when that first came out. There was a specific scene that interested me in Titanic, and very little of the rest of it did. I will leave the rest to your imagination. Back to the topic at hand here, now that I'm an older man. Um, we are walking on plywood. Katrina and the Way has walked on sunshine. We are walking on plywood, which virtually nobody else in this class does. And it is one of several aspects of the Jayco Magnum Trust roof package. They give this the heaviest roof load rating available in this class. Notice too, every fixture that can be is white up here for sunshine efficiency. We, we talk all the time, is it four seasons, is it cold camp rated? Does the thing work in the sun? Cause that's when most of us are camping. This thing works in the sun, son. And all the way up front there, you can see it actually does have a factory standard roof solar prep plug every single Jayco travel trailer is at least roof solar prepped and they all have some variety of factory solar package. Uh, available, they have some package available. I didn't say the word available, did I? Okay, it's available, not stand. Why do I do this to myself? So as always, I really ask for your feedback. Let me know, what do you like? What do you dislike? Because frankly, that's just important. If there's something about this that you're like, I wish they would do something like that. You never know. We have so many different options here at Halo RV. There's a very real chance that we could also um, uh, have something like this for you from a different manufacturer that maybe has the features you're looking for. Like that Wildwood Versa Lounge. We have the Wildwoods here at Halo RV. That's something that we can assist you with, you know? There's all kinds of different RVs out there. They all do something better than somebody else. There's no question about that. But overall, I think if what you're looking for is the most feature-packed, most highly equipped version of this floor plan out there, I, I, don't, I don't really know who else I could direct you to that's going to pack more into this thing. It is just a stellar model. It has been one of the cornerstones of the J-Flight lineup for a long time. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Uh, whether you're serious or whether you're curious, check the link in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability. And short of that, if you haven't done so, remember, hit that subscribe button. And at the very least, if you don't really have anything to, to offer, at least click the like button on our video here. And it does help spread the message around. We're family owned and operated. And when you're ready, boy, we'd love the chance to work with you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.